Okay, this is from a restaurant at the food court in the mall called Beef. Welcome to bonus video. Today we're going to do some Q&A interspersed with some local flavor. Some video clips that I took as I went about my day uh, yesterday. So let's go. Vamanos. And we get these artisanal potatoes. And a bun. A chopped up bacon or ham. Lettuce, tomato cheese two skinny little patties they are charcoal so um, probably tastes good and a big natural uh, limonada which is limeade so let's check it out mostly we're going to talk about Manizales the video that I just made uh, started with the coffee time live and then I made this video about my trip to Manizales with my friend Mark. And I got some questions out of it. First question, the hills. In your earlier videos, you said that it was horrible and that you would never recommend anybody going there. And now you're talking like it's okay. All right, well, let me explain that. It's actually a very good question. I wanted to impress the fact that this is a city built on a mountain on various levels. And depending on how you set your life up, it could be pretty difficult. It could be problematic. However, after I lived there for a while, I saw that you can actually set your life in a way that's not so difficult. For example, the main boulevard where everything is located, especially on the east end, El Cable. If you're talking about that area, it's Avenue uh, Benti today, 23. If you're talking about that area, you can have an apartment on there or very close to there. And that avenue that runs the length of the city, so you're talking more than a mile, you can walk up and down there and it's relatively flat the entire way. Now, some of the nicer areas like Alto Suisse, that's a very nice little barrio. And if you want to get up to the mall, it, it's quite a hike. On the other hand, you could just take a taxi. It's not that far. It'll be just the minimum charge, but you could do that. So you could set your life up to, even though those hills are, you know, tough to scale, you could still have a pretty good life and not have to worry about that. I ate all the potatoes. They were crazy good fantastic and I don't know if I can get much more on this burger it reminds me a lot of a Whopper you know the charcoal flavor I realize in the Whopper it's synthetic and this is real but it tastes very similar actually uh, the bacon or ham chunks don't really taste them don't see any point in it lettuce and tomatoes good uh, I'll say add onion and the uh, limonada natural is really good and it had crushed ice in it very refreshing so all in all big thumbs up i would say this burger where would you put a whopper maybe a six another thing that came up and there was a comment in the video shop before i could actually respond to it said, well, if you were in Cuenca at 8,000 feet and you had altitude problems, Manizales is only about 7,000 feet, why wouldn't you have them there? And I think it's important to understand some things about altitude. And I'll throw up some charts here. There is a big difference between 7,000 feet and 8,000 feet. In talking to the doctor and some of the information that I read, 
back when I was being diagnosed for my problem, that's almost like a breaking point and things will exponentially change. The, the pressure of the oxygen or the atmospheric pressure, uh, the amount of oxygen in the air, it exponentially changes. So at 7,000 feet, things could be fine. You get to 8,000 feet and there's quite a difference there. From 7,000 to 8,000 is more dramatic than if you went from 3,000 to 7,000. 7,000 seems to be fine. Um, never met anybody who had problems in Manizales. Now in Cuenca and Quito, there's a, there's a misunderstanding about it because if you were born in the Andes, local people, you say, well, they never have any problems because they were born there. And there are actually physiological changes to those bodies when they're born there. They're equipped to deal with it. That's where they were born. If you're not born there, there's an adjustment. That adjustment can take two, three, four years or never happen. And again, I don't mean that initial, you know, few days or a week or two. I'm talking about long-term issues. You can have heart problems. You can have lung problems. It can be a real issue and you may not know it for a year or two. But if you're at 7,000 feet, the chances of that hitting you are very slim. But once you get over 8,000 feet, the, the chances of that hitting you become, uh, you know, a lot higher. I took a walk, came down to the mall. Got a couple things I need to uh, look for. And I've shown you before, but I'm showing you again. You said that you had more videos to Manizales, but where are they? If you go back in the library and click on videos and you look for season six from zero to 14, those are all when I was in Manizales. And most of those are talking head videos like this. There's scenes throughout those. And there's a couple videos where I, I walk down 23 and I show that. So there, there's certainly videos about Manizales and I talk about Manizales in those videos. Now in Manizales, you said that there's no gringos. Well, I'm not saying that there's no gringos. I'm just saying that there's very few. But it doesn't mean you're trapped. You know, this idea, if you've never been to a South American country or a Spanish-speaking country, that you really have to be in a gringo community. And yes, I know I said, you know, beware um, if you want to be isolated and alone. Manizales is a place for that, so be careful if you're not like that. Well, yes and no. The thing is, you can create whatever it is you want to create. You don't need other gringos to do it. We all know that the best way to learn a language is to assimilate. We know that from the United States. Immigrants in the past, when language of English was required, they actually integrated into society. They had much uh, better jobs. And today, when that requirement isn't there, they end up stuck in their own communities and working jobs under the table because they can't integrate in society because they don't have the language. Well, if you assimilate into the society, you're going to learn that language way faster. If you hang out in gringo communities, it'll take you a lifetime to learn Spanish. If you immerse yourself into the local culture, you're going to learn Spanish pretty quick. It'll be a matter of survival but you'll reap benefits from it. In Manizales, you're going to find a lot of students that are learning English, and you can meet some. Uh, they can help you with Spanish. You can help with their English. You can also create your own network. I talked about that in the, in the dating video, which was as much about creating a network. Do volunteer work, for example, or go to the local English language schools and offer to sit in and have conversations with people trying to learn English. You're not only going to get to meet people, but you're going to have people willing to help you along the way. So you don't have to be alone, and your life will get far more adjusted quickly to living in this kind of culture with this language 
than if you really use the gringo communities as a crutch. It's not to say it's not nice to speak your language. I'll tell you, I'll go, I'll go weeks or months at a time where I don't get to speak English, and then I pity the poor person. That, I pity the poor person that comes along, and I talk their ear off because I haven't had a chance to speak English in so long. And I'm also finding myself. It's almost like I've got English Alzheimer's. It's what was that word? What was that word? And it's like a very simple word, a word you would never forget. But, you know, when you're not using that language for a while, it just kind of like it takes a minute to adjust back to it. So don't let those things get in your way. If you have any kind of adventurous spirit, but the thing is, don't sit back on your butt and do nothing. Get out there and make it happen. Your life is yours. Make it happen. There was a question more of a comment um, about the Kimbaya video and the person noticed that there was quite a blending of ages in the video. In other words, you saw old people with middle-aged people with young people. They're all hanging out together. That is the way it is. In Ecuador, it was the same. It's the same here. You know, families are together. There's no shyness about it. You'll see mothers and daughters and fathers and sons, and you'll see people holding their hands when they're walking. It's very sweet, but there's not a uh, generational gap like what you're familiar with. It's not like they get to seven and all of a sudden, I got to get out on my own. I don't know you anymore. You know, you drop them off at the school and they're embarrassed. There's nothing like that that goes on here. It's pretty nice. So I'm glad you noticed it in the video. It is the way it is here. It's one of the nice things. A camera update. Now, I announced, uh, thanks to the contribution, that I ordered the camera. I'll show some uh, little video here. Now, there has been a glitch. I was supposed to receive it yesterday. And that was, uh, I got an email and said, hey, did you get that camera? It was supposed to be in yesterday. Well, no, they didn't actually ship it until yesterday. I don't, I don't know what the issue is. I wrote to the company that I bought the camera from, and they said, well, uh, talk to Amazon. I, I bought it from you. And they said, well, it's a thing on Amazon. Well, Amazon, yeah, I don't know. I'm, so I just, it's, it's on its way. Now, I paid to get the, what is it, three to five day shipping, and it's according to their schedule. I won't see it for seven days. So I'm not real pleased about that. You know, why did I pay for that shipping? Well, the truth is I paid for the shipping to help me ensure it gets to my door. Everything you can do to expedite any uh, anything coming to you is worth doing. And it was $19 versus $14. So I took the plunge, you know, and, uh, and had it sent that way. So, you know, fingers crossed, we'll, we'll hope it works out. And I, I got another uh, question a few days ago about uh, why do you need another camera? You have a GoPro and you have your studio camera and you use your cell phone. Yeah, I get it. I, I've explained along the way, but uh, quickly, uh, there's sound problems. The clips out of my cell phone are acting up the stabilizer. Uh, I, I tend to think it's not the stabilizer now. I think it's actually in the cell phone. I'm having... A serious battery issue with it yeah I know it's new but you know things happen uh, maybe because I heavily use it so I lose clips uh, sound isn't working properly with GoPro the sound is almost non-existent and I'm also getting a lot of corrupted clips out of the GoPro and yes I've changed the media card a couple times and it didn't make any difference. There's something with the GoPro itself. It's a GoPro 5 Black. Shouldn't be having problems, but I'm having problems. So, and, and the last thing is, I needed a camera that was a little more covert, that I can kind of sneak into some places where they don't allow video. And with this new camera, uh, hopefully I can do just that. So it's built-in stabilizer. It's a really good camera with 4K, uh, by all accounts. It's got very reasonable sound, and it's um, tiny. So 
let's hope, you know, let's hope put all pans out. I got to do something if we're going to keep this going. You guys contributed to it, so it better get here. Okay, just to tell you about YouTube real quick, I just got an email from them telling me that uh, the ad money that they're supposed to pay me that has dwindled to like 20 bucks a month. They're telling me now that that's going to be limited, which is crazy because it seems they're putting a million ads on my video. I had somebody go back and watch Sunday's Coffee Time, and he commented every few minutes there's an ad popping up, and he, uh, he hopes that I get a lot of money from that. I'm not getting anything from it. Normally, I get pe peanuts off it. They keep putting a lot more ads to it. I'm sorry. I, I can't really control it. And they're keeping all the money, and now they're telling me I'm under investigation because they think I'm getting fake viewers, which is really crazy because I almost know every viewer that, you know, that I've gotten. If I get a video that's get three or 400 views in the first week, that's nothing exceptional, especially when you've got, you know, 2,500 subscribers. I would actually expect more out of it than that. But it's just one more excuse for YouTube just to uh, grab more money. They just, they've been at this going on four years now, and it just, the screws get tighter and tighter and tighter. There's no options, and they know it. Question on Vimeo. Why don't I use Vimeo? I could switch to that platform, and granted, you don't get ad money, but it's a very good platform. It is a very good platform, and I'd like to. And I mentioned that... Um, it's just too expensive, and I, and I got a reply on that. Well, what do you mean it's so expensive? Well, there's tiers, but the tier that I would have to use for my video, for my audience, to do live, to do the things that I'm doing on YouTube, it's $900 a year payable for the year. So they have it broken down 70 something dollars a month, but you can't pay it monthly, and it's too much anyway. I, I can't afford to do that. It, it's just all the more that you have to contribute. And, I, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, bleed you dry. I'm trying to keep your contributions to things that we really need that you're going to directly benefit from. And if I can use YouTube without that cost, I'm going to do that. You know, if uh, somebody wants to send me $1,000 for the year, I'll do that. But you know, don't. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's kind of a waste of money. Um, it would be nice to be free of YouTube, but um, I just think it's kind of outrageous, and that's why I don't really bring it up, but I'm answering actually two questions. I'm answering those questions. And last is the Skype. I've been getting quite a few calls. I really appreciate that. I want to thank you for those calls. I know that they've been beneficial because of the feedback that I'm getting from it. It's, you know, I say it's basically an hour up to two hours. It, they've been running closer to an hour and a half. I actually had one that uh, we ran over two hours, and it's fine. You know, whatever questions you have or conversation, and that's what it tends to be, is I get a list of questions that you have, and I, you know, how I just kind of go on endlessly. I, I'll turn into conversations with examples and anecdotes to try to give you a real sense of what it is rather than just give you the flat answer you know I'll try to give you the flavor around that question or that answer uh, so that you can internalize it you, you know it seems to be working and somebody said well how do I do a Skype call well I say this all the time but in the description below the video and I think if you're watching on TV you'll never see that so get on your laptop or your cell phone and open up any video and you know just open up the last video and look in or even this one and look in the description there's a whole bunch of stuff in there it talks about things that i can do it talks about equipment that i use it has links so you can get discounts on hotels or airbnb or sending money it's got all kinds of things that you know may be of interest to you but when you get down i don't know halfway or more uh, you'll run across uh, uh, Skype, the Skype call. Um, it, so from there is information, uh, payment, contributions, uh, meeting up, or, you know, like meeting up in Armenia or like I did the other day in Manizales. So whatever it is you, you know, you think you need or want to plan for, really all the basic information is there. Once you get a sense of it, just send me off an email and we can talk about it. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed some of these clips. 
and uh, see you Sunday.